sometimes people will say, well, if you knew what happened to me, you'd know why I'm the way that I am. And I say, if you knew what happened to Jesus, you know what happened to him is greater than anything that's ever happened to you. In other words, God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. Where sin abounded, grace did much more about. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Talking about your identification with Christ, or who you are in Christ, Galatians 2.20, says, I am crucified with Christ. Why don't we just all read it together? Are you ready? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Praise the Lord. So this Galatians 2.20 is really uh, uh, Paul's understanding are his revelation of Christianity. In other words, this is the center of Christianity is who I am. I was crucified with Christ, and now Christ lives in me. His life is on the inside of me. And so when Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, look at it this way. I love the first two words where he says, I am. In other words, what happened on the cross when Jesus was crucified? What happened in his death, what happened in his resurrection has changed who I am. Are y'all still here? It's changed who I am and my definition of who I is. Are y'all still here? And so I, so when Paul says I, he's talking really about the inward man, the spirit of man. He's talking about your true identity. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Other translations say Christ took me to the cross with him, and I died there with him. All right, let's try it one more time. Christ took me to the cross with him, and I died there with him. In other words, Jesus, as our substitute, he took our condition. Because he took our condition, we were identified with him. In other words, identification means to consider or treat as one and the same. To consider or treat as one and the same. In other words, if you went to the airport and you're going to fly uh, nationally or internationally, they would say we need a legal form of identification. So you would either give your driver's license or your passport. When you pull out your passport, you're saying this passport and I, me, are identical. This is who I am. So today, as a Christian, you pull out your Bible, and you find yourself in Christ, and you find yourself in the Word of God, and you say, this scripture right here describes who I am, right? So Paul says what happened on the cross is Christ took us to the cross with him. In other words, everything Jesus did, he did it for us. So it's set to the credit of our account like we were there. We were identified with him. Very powerful revelation or powerful information. I like to say it's the most dangerous information in the world. It's the most powerful information in the world. In other words, uh, Romans 1.16 says the gospel of Christ, it is the power of God. Are y'all still with me? The gospel of Christ, it is what? The power of God. So it's not natural. It's a supernatural power that's in the gospel. And so the gospel, the center of the gospel, the message of the gospel, right in the middle, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, the gospel, I preach to you the gospel, that Jesus died, he was buried, and on the third day, he was raised from the dead. 
In other words, you may not understand everything about the Bible, but it's very important for you to understand the gospel or to see the Bible in the light of redemption. In other words, there's a lot of ways to study the Bible, but to understand as a Christian, then you have to know what happened on the cross, what happened in the death of Christ, what happened in the resurrection of Christ, what happened, not just what man saw, but what God saw. Not just what happened in the scene, but what happened in the unseen. So Paul's letters tell you the gospel in what happened in the sight of God, or in the Spirit, or Paul tells you what God saw. So, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and they tell you pretty much what man saw. So, you see what man saw, you see what the Roman soldiers saw, but in Paul's letters, he tells you what God saw. So, I like to say it this way, the four Gospels show you the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and they give you a photograph of redemption. Paul's letters gives you an x-ray of redemption. In other words, a photograph tells you what you look like on the outside. The x-ray looks inside and shows you what's happening inside. So in Paul's letters, Paul's letters show you what happened in the spirit. Listen now. He shows you what God saw, but he also shows you what the devil saw. He shows you what every angel saw. He shows you what happened in the spirit. In other words, you and I need to see the same thing God saw that God did for us in Christ. When Paul saw that, Paul's revelation radically changed him as an individual. He said, I'm changed so much, I'm not even the same person I used to be. All things have passed away. Everything has become new. And so Paul's whole identity was changed by Jesus Christ. All right, let's try this out over here. I said, Paul's whole identity. So Jesus is not just something you kind of add to yourself and your personality and all the things. Your whole identity has changed. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if anyone is in Christ. Let's try it one more time. Come on, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you are now in Christ. If anyone is in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, in other words, works the same for everybody. If anyone is in Christ, they become a new, a new creature. The word new means new in kind, new in quality. In other words, you're not just a new person, you're a new kind of person. Uh -huh. So God has produced a new species, a new kind of human. You can no longer say, I'm only human. You can say, I'm also human, but I'm not only human. I'm a partaker of the divine nature. I have the life of God on the inside of me. I'm a, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. New in kind, new in quality are the God kind. That's what they said about Jesus in the four gospels. What they said about Jesus was what? Amen. We got one runner. Hallelujah. Amen. One for two. But uh, <laughs> what they said about Jesus in the four Gospels is what did they say? They said, what kind of man is this? Come on. A man who has authority that casts out devils. A man who has authority. What kind of man is this? Well, that's the Jesus kind of man. And that's what he made you when you make him your Lord and Savior. Come on. With a new kind of life, a new kind of love, a new kind of authority. Come on. A new kind. The God kind. You become a new kind of creature that never existed before. You no longer get your identity just from your skin from your genetics, come on now, from your experiences, come on, or from your environment. Your identity comes from the Word of God, comes from Jesus Christ. He tells you who you are. Woo! Praise the Lord. So your identification with Christ, your identity, in other words, if the devil can confuse your identity, then he can mess up your destiny. Come on, but if you know who you are, come on, your identity, not produced by your experiences. In other words, what God has done for you in Christ 
is greater than anything that's ever happened to you. Sometimes people will say, well, if you knew what happened to me, you'd know why I'm the way that I am. And I say, if you knew what happened to Jesus, you'd know what happened to him is greater than anything that's ever happened to you. In other words, God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. In other words, God's work in Christ far exceeds no matter what damage the enemy or what Satan has done. So what happened in the death and resurrection of Christ? Well, the gospel is that message. Let's try that one more time. I said the gospel is the power of God, produces salvation. The gospel is really the center of the gospel is that message. What happened from the cross to the throne? What happened? What man saw? What did God see? What happened in the spirit? That's the center of the gospel. Now listen close. The resurrection of Christ was the greatest display of power in the history of the universe. Are y'all still with me? So Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1 becomes a pretty important prayer. That's the prayer Dad Hagen told us to pray when I was really just a teenager. He said, pray this prayer, Ephesians 1, every day. Don't miss a day. More than once a day, pray it every day. Don't miss a day for at least six months. He said, if you'll pray it every day, it'll happen to you. And the first thing that'll happen is the Bible will become a different book to you. Instead of reading the Bible to go to sleep, then you read the Bible and you can't go to sleep. In other words, <laughs> the Bible is a living thing. The Bible, the Word of God, is just as alive as Jesus himself is alive. Amen. Let's try it one more time. The message is just as alive as Jesus himself is alive. Amen. All right? So, the resurrection of Christ, when God raised Christ from the dead. So, here's kind of the way I was studying it and came to me this way, the greatest display of power, Paul says in Ephesians 1, exceeding great, unlimited, immeasurable power, listen now, towards us who believe, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So Paul can't even find enough adjectives to describe the kind of power that raised Christ from the dead. He goes, exceeding great Unlimited, immeasurable, great, mighty power raised Christ from the dead. What's he trying to say? Power, 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 power raised Christ from the dead. Explosive power. Amen. So why did God use such tremendous power in the resurrection of Christ? Why? Well, because, here's the way the Lord says to me, in the resurrection of Christ, Jesus was not just overcoming rigor mortis. Rigor mortis is serious. You get stiff, and they put you in a box six feet under, so I would say that's a serious thing. So, uh, rigor mortis is a serious condition, or you just say physical death. But when God raised Jesus from the dead, he was not just overcoming physical death. When God raised Jesus from the dead, he released enough power to undo everything Satan had done in Adam. So there is no power shortage here. Amen. All right, let's try this out. If you say, come on, you say, I feel so weak and I'm so tired and weak. I, I need a Starbucks. No, you're really going to need a lot more than that in your life. In other words, God said, I'm making such tremendous power available. Come on, explosive power, unlimited power, immeasurable power towards every believer. Come on, what he put in Christ. Come on, there's no power shortage. I feel no so Paul's prayer in Ephesians 1 is I'm praying for you as a believer. Spirit-filled believer. Do spirit-filled believers need prayer? Yeah, most of Paul's prayers were for believers. All right, so he says, I'm praying for you. What's he praying for? 
Well, he says, Father God, I'm asking you to give unto them. In my case, I put my name in there. I'm asking you to give unto them. Here he says what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God. All right, slow down a little bit. The spirit, in other words, this is a spiritual thing. What happened in the spirit and the power of the word of God, which Jesus said, spirit and life. What happened in the spirit? He says, God would give you, think about that. The, the new creature in Christ is such an amazing creature that God literally had to give you a new language that your brain can't figure out so that you could pray in a language that you don't even know what you're saying to speak divine mysteries and secrets of what God has done for you in Christ and your spirit gets edified and then the Holy Spirit takes hold together with you and your spirit is praying and your spirit is praying and talking to God and God is a spirit. Come on. Because that's the part of you that got born again and recreated is your spirit. Your spirit joined to Christ. Amen. In other words, God's method of grace is the opposite of man's legalism. In other words, holiness by legalism means you got to get good enough, right enough, stop this, start that, and then you'll be brought into fellowship and union with Christ. God's method of grace is just the opposite. He begins by bringing you into union and fellowship with Christ, and he says, through that union, I will communicate everything you need to straighten out any kind of problem you got in your life and, uh, through your union with Christ. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so let's see if we can get, make a little progress here. Praise the Lord. Your identification or your union with Christ. So listen close. What God did in the death and resurrection of Christ, tremendous power. But Paul says the gospel contains that same power. All right, let's say it this way. The devil is just as afraid of the gospel as he is of the events. All right, let's say it this way. The word or the message, the gospel is a message. The devil's just as afraid of the message as he is of the event because the message contains the power of the event. So when you open your Bible and start studying the gospel, come on, of your identification and union with Christ, the gospel has the same power or the message has the same power as the event. Are y'all still with me here? So the moment you start studying and meditating on the gospel, it's the power of God, your identification with Christ, the signature of the gospel is two words, in Christ. Everything God did in Christ, he did it for you. Or I like to say it this way, God put into Christ everything he wanted you to have, and then he put you in Christ. Yeah. Our God did in Christ what he wanted to do in everybody. So when you made Jesus your Lord, then you say, I was crucified with him. I died with him. I was buried with him. I was made alive with him. I've been raised up together with him. I'm seated together with him in heavenly places. I'm blessed with him. I have authority with him. Come on. This is not where you grow to. This is where you start from. Come on. Take your place in Christ. Not after 30 years, but today, take your place in Christ. Come on, and you never fight for victory. You fight from a place of victory in Christ. Your identification with Christ, who you are in Christ. Praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Most dangerous information in the world is the gospel. Come on, whole nations, whole nations, come on, I've shut down my visa because I carry the gospel. It's more powerful than a nuclear bomb. It has the power to undo everything Satan has done. 
It has the power to recreate the spirit of a man. Come on. He has the power to destroy the works of the devil. It has the power to heal your body. It has the power to change your mind. It has the power to set you free from poverty. It has the power to deliver you from every devil, every demon, every influence of the enemy. That power that's in the gospel and that power is in the name of Jesus. That power is in the blood of Jesus. And that power is in the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excuse me for hollering, but I still like that. Yeah. Amen. I still get happy about that. Amen. Amen. The first time I was studying, I was 17 years old, and I was going from Galatians 220, and Dad Hagen said, take the in Christ scriptures. Well, I was a teenager. He is an older minister at that time, and at my dad's church, he said, the best way I know to study the New Testament. He said, there's a lot of ways you can study the New Testament. He said, but the one I recommend above all others. <laughs> well, he's teaching on faith and mountain moving faith. And so I thought, well, I'm going to listen to this guy. He said, the one I recommend above all the others is go through Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, Paul's letters. He said, and every time you see the two words in Christ, in him, or in whom, circle or underline those two words because that describes something you are and something you have because you are now in Christ. Well, I, I, was, I was tired of the I'm trying to be. Let's try this out. How many of you have sat in church long enough and got tired of you trying to be? I, I even got tired of I'm going to be. Come on. I really got tired of I need to be. But the moment I saw the grace of God in Christ, I said, I am. I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm going to tell you what I have. Amen. Because I'm now in Christ. In him, I've been made the righteousness of God in him. You can't get any more righteous than the moment you get in Christ. That's a free gift. So I began to study some in Christ, in him, in whom, scriptures. Well, he said there's 130. Okay. So we started studying. I had a good friend, uh, and we just started going through it. And then to make it more interesting, we would compare the King James in 100 different translations. <laughs> so how many know it took a little bit of time? So we ended up with 35 very significant in Christ scriptures. So then we'd get it in the King James, and then we'd go from in Christ, in him, in whom, and then we'd go to King James, then we'd go to the Amplified Bible, and then we collected a hundred different translations. Then we came across one by the name, a guy named Arthur S. Way, and he only translated Paul's letters. I like what uh, P.C. Nelson said. Paul's letters contain the thoughts that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. All right, let's try that again. Paul's revelation, Paul's letters contain the thoughts Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. They are the advanced teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. In Christ, this changes everything. The two words in Christ, in him, or in whom are used more than 130 times in the Bible. Out of these scriptures, about 30 are significant and tell you who you are and what you have in Christ. This brand new book of Pastor Mark contains practical teachings on your identification in Christ and lists 30 key life-changing scriptures with several translations added to make it easy for you to meditate and strengthen your faith. You must have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. You will also get the four CD set in Christ, this changes everything. 
With these teachings, you will learn your identity in Christ and how to walk in victory every day. After all, Jesus purchased that for you. When you acknowledge who Jesus is, he turns around and tells you who you are. Here at Mark Hankins Ministries, we believe we are called to train and equip believers all over the world. This is why our vision is to translate our books into more than 100 languages. Your gift of any amount will help us translate these books into these many languages. We believe there's an acceleration on the call of Mark Hankins Ministries to train and equip. So together with our partners in Christ, we are spreading the message of faith around the world. Visit MarkHankins.org or call 318-767-2001 to get more information on how to order the special offer or how to partner with us to carry the message of faith around the world. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you are encouraged and you are blessed and strengthened in your faith. As I know, as you hear the word, you're feeding your faith and it just changes everything. We're excited because this week's offer is my dad's new book, In Christ, This Changes Everything. I love this book because not only does it tell you everything that you have in Christ, what already belongs to you in Christ, not something that you're trying to get, but something that already belongs to you in Christ. It tells you those things in this book. We want you to have this free of charge, your gift of any amount. You can go to markhankins.org or call the number on the screen. For a moment, I want to thank you who partner with Mark Hankins Ministries. It is because of your generosity and your heart for this vision and to see this vision fulfilled that we are able to do what God has called us to do here at Mark Hankins Ministries. You know, my parents have been doing this for over 50 years and they don't plan on stopping anytime soon. You know, the vision is to have our books translated into a hundred different translations and you are helping us do just that. Thank you and have a great day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.